Okay, let's start off with running in place. Okay, if running is not working for you because of joint problems, because of back problems, you can march or you can walk back and forth. But this is to warm up, so you need to start moving. Punches now, keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. shuffle forward and back keep your hands up so when I'm going forward I lead with my front foot and the back one drags when I'm going back I lead with the back foot and the front one drags this is going to be important a little bit later And knees. Keep the standing one bent. That keeps um, a load on this leg. So it's just more work. If you're doing the work anyway, you may as well do a little bit more. Other side. Okay, next one is skaters. Ideally, you step and touch behind. If you want more, step and reach behind and balance. If you need less, step and touch. And kicks, front side back. your hands up. Make sure that the standing foot is pointed in the right direction, which means when I'm throwing a side kick there, the toes of the standing foot are pointing that way. Okay, now we stretch. Reach up. Straight out to the front. Okay, when I go out to the front, my chin is up, my back is flat. I'm not rounded here. It's completely flat. Someone could actually stand here. And then reach for the floor. Okay, over to one side, lift your chin, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knees. I'm not quite about pulling my head to my knee. My head is up and I'm pulling my chest to my knee. Now I have a side stretch, both heels on the floor. If you need more stretch, take this elbow inside the knee, push the knee further open. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Stand up, straighten out both knees. All my toes are facing in the same direction. My chin is up, my back is flat. I'm not going this way, I'm going this way. So I'm pulling my chest toward my front knee. As you feel this primarily in the hamstring and front leg, you also feel it a little bit in the calf of the back leg. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, chin up, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch. Focus on heels on the floor.
turn, <coughs> stretch your hip flexor. Again, if you want a little bit more, you could take this elbow, push into the knee. Straighten up the legs, toes in the same direction, knee straight, chin up, chest toward the front knee. Have a seat, bottoms of your feet together, okay? You can either grab your ankles and push your knees down, or you can put your hands here, because in either case, your back needs to be flat. Okay? Grabbing your ankles rounds your back, it's, you're not getting a good stretch. So, in that case, put your hands here, so your elbows are pushing into your back, and pushing your back straight, and just push your knees down. Straight out in front of you, grab your toes, pull your heels up off the floor. Okay, I'm not rounded here, my chin is still up. Pull your feet in, heels on the floor, rock back and forth. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs. Again, rather than having your head here, lift your chin and up. Okay, then we're going to do three exercises, one that targets upper body, one that targets core, one that targets lower body, and each one, I'm going to show it to you, and then you're going to do it on your own, once I've shown them all to you, for at least a minute each. The first one is tabletop to L-sit. Some of you guys hate this one. I don't really care. I like this one. It's going to keep on coming back. What you need to do when you do this is you don't want your hands way back here. You want your hands, ideally your fingers are facing this way. My wrists don't bend enough to do that. I have to do this up on my, on my knuckles. But you want to be so that when you're in L sit, you don't want your hands way back here behind your hips. You want them here, forward of your hips. So then I put my feet down, I lift my hips, push them to the ceiling, and then I pull them back behind my hands. My butt is not touching the floor. The goal here with the L-sit would be eventually to get your feet up to hold them off the floor. I'm not there yet, but I got more weight off them than I did this time last summer. So hips up and then pull your hands, behind, your butt behind your hands, butt off the floor. Okay, that's tabletop to L-sit. One minute. Next one, is cross-legged. So like locked up, feet crossed. We're gonna do sit-ups this way. So my hands are here. They're not pulling me up and down. Okay, they're staying here towards the ceiling. So they come up, my legs are crossed. It gives you way less leverage than having them out here. So it's more work on your core. If you let your arms come back here, then you're shoulders are pulling you up, which is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your core muscles to be pulling you up. Okay, so that's the second one. The third one is squat to lunge. Now, when you do a squat, you want the bulk of your weight to be on your heels. So you want your feet out comfortably so that you're planted solid. You want your toes straight forward and you want your weight in your heels. You can actually take your toes off the floor when you do this, okay? You're not going here or here. Think about a chair behind you and you're putting your butt down on the chair. So my shoulders are staying over my hips. When I do my lunge, I'm stepping back far enough <clears throat> that my knee is over my ankle. If you don't step back far enough, you get your knee sticking out past your ankle, past your toes, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So step back far enough that your ankle, knees over your ankle, and almost touch your knee to the floor. If you're doing it on a mat or on a carpet with a pad under it, if you bang your knee on the floor, it doesn't matter. If you do it on the wooden floor, on the pavement like that, it's gonna hurt. So you're gonna step out, squat, step in, lunge. Squat, lunge. Squat, lunge. 
squat, lunge. And I want you to do that for a minute. So a minute of tabletop to L sit, a minute of, I think they call it Taylor sit with your legs crossed, sit ups, and a minute of squat to lunge. Okay, this is the last month of the cycle. So this month we're getting ready for strike test and you're gonna be getting your strike for intensity. Uh, so we're gonna start off working on some kicks. And this is particularly important for the kids, but the adults need to think about this too. Intensity has nothing to do with noise. You don't have to make any noise at all for intensity. Intensity is all those other things that we work on. It's focusing on the target. It's accurately hitting the target correctly. It's moving fast enough for the techniques to be useful, but not so fast that you're sloppy. It's generating power in every technique that you do. So we're gonna take some kicks. I want you to grab something that you can hold on to to start. So we're gonna start with front kicks, and you're gonna start here, standing foot almost straight forward. You're gonna pick your knee up and push knee in and down. We're gonna do five like that. That's one, two, three, four, five. I'm looking at my target. Okay, then same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna do roundhouse kicks. <clears throat> I'm going to take my standing foot, turn it away from the target. The foot that I'm kicking with, my knee is facing the target my heel, my knee, my hip are all the same height and my hand is up. Kick in and back down. That's one, two, three, four, five. Then on the other side, check your standing foot. Make sure it's facing the right way. Hand up, knee is up, it's facing the target. Your heel, your knee, your hip are all at the same height. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing with the side kick. Standing foot's turning that way. Um, I think I've got to change my chair for this. You know, bring your knee straight up. Okay, it's not tucked here, it's straight up like you're putting your foot on a step. Then I'm going to turn so that my butt and my heel are facing the target and I'm going to push one, two, three, four, five. And then the other side. Check your standing foot. One, two. Three, four, five. Okay, then you can get rid of your chair or whatever you're holding on to. Okay, the reason I like you to hold on to something at the beginning is because then you can focus on the technique. Because if you don't have the technique, no matter how fast you go or how hard you think you're doing it, it's never going to be useful. Okay, so then we're going to take those same kicks and we're going to do them just standing in the air. So I'm going to do front, round, side. And then the other side. Front, round, side. Okay, so I want you to get a partner and I want your partner, if you have a focus pad at home, that's, that's the best. If you don't, use your hands. Your partner's going to hold for front, round, side. They're not going to hold them in front of themselves. They're going to hold for front kick. They're going to hold for round kick. They're going to hold for side kick. And you're going to do it on both sides. Then you're going to take the pad and you're going to have your partner do it. Even if your partner doesn't take karate, ask them to do it. Because the best way for you to learn the technique is by helping someone else to learn them. So you're going to critique them. Then what they're going to do is they're going to take their hands target or their small pad, whatever they have, and you're going to stand in your guard stance. You're going to close your eyes and they're going to move around you. So then they're going to stop someplace and they're going to offer you a target. And with intensity, okay, not noise, but intensity, power, speed, focus, accuracy, proper technique, you are going to turn to them and hit the target with an appropriate kick. So they're holding the target like this. You're going to do a front kick or a side kick 
If they're holding it like this, you're going to do a roundhouse kick, or we didn't practice these, but you can do a pitch hockey or a hook kick. So you're going to stand here, your eyes are closed. Your partner's going to call you, you're going to turn and look. So if my partner calls me and they're there, I'm going to turn and look, the pad's up and down, I'm going to throw a side uh, roundhouse kick. Come back, close my eyes again. Partner calls me. I open my eyes. They're there. Pads this way. I'm going to throw a side kick. I could have thrown a front kick. Okay, so I want your partner to move around you. I want them to offer you at least 10 different targets, and then I want you to trade jaws. Okay, you guys have three forms to do. Uh, action Karate Form 3, Action Karate Form 6, and Action Karate Form 9. I'm going to do each one of them one time with you. You're going to do each one three times. So the first time you do it, you're going to do it with no intensity at all. Um, not sloppy. It still has to look like karate. Just... Um, no power, no speed, not thinking about um, phrases. The second time is just kind of middle of the road. And the third one is not noise. I'm not looking for noise, but full on intensity, power, speed, focus, perfect stances, perfect lockout, perfect chambers. Okay, so I think I'm gonna angle this down a little bit so you can see my feet. And then we're gonna do action karate form three. So that's the first one I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do action karate form three with no intensity at all. Okay, I'm still doing the moves correctly. They're just slow. Slow enough that if I hit anything, I would meet the target, but it's not gonna hit the target hard enough to do any good. Okay, so now I want you to do that. You can either turn the video off now and do Action Karate Form 3 two more times, or you can do all three with me and then go back. So now I'm gonna do six, and I'm gonna do six at medium intensity. And then I'm going to do nine, well, as all out as I can do without making the house shake. Okay, so action karate form nine. Okay, so now you're gonna do them all three forms, three, six, nine, three times each. Barely inten any intensity, moderate, moderate intensity, and tons of intensity. Okay, then you're gonna do them each one more time, but when you do them again, you're gonna have somebody calling out. Okay, so I'll say I'll do action karate form three and pretend somebody's calling out for me. So the scale that you're working on is from a scale of one to 10. So one is very low intensity, 10 is very high intensity. So somebody needs to sit by you or stand by you or however you want to do it. And as you go through the form, they're just going to yell numbers at you. So I say action karate form three and I come here. So supposing the person yells at me five, I'm going to start the form at a level five intensity. Now they yell two, so I crank my intensity down to a two. Now they yell nine. So I have to crank it up to a nine. Then they say one. Actually, I have to do one more of those. Then they say 10. Okay, so I want you to do each form one more time. Three, six, nine. And I want somebody to call out to you the numbers from one to 10. 
low intensity to high intensity as you do the form. And just as I call those numbers, pick your intensity up or down based on the numbers that they're giving you. Okay, for the next thing that we do, before we start doing self-defense, we have to practice break falls. Okay, so <clears throat> I would suggest practicing this um, in a room with a rug or on a mat. Okay, this isn't really, this is just a, um, a like a grass mat that covers the, the wood because the wood's not finished underneath, so it's kind of hard. You would like to find something softer than that. But you're gonna start here, and you're going to pick your knees in and tuck your chin. So if I do this, my back makes a circle from the back of my head down my back. It's not straight lines. I'm gonna hold my knees and I'm gonna rock up and down. Okay, so if you're rounded when you fall, it hurts less. And by having your chin tucked, it means you're not gonna slam your head on the floor behind you. Okay, so now we're gonna start here. Actually, I want you to lay down Put your hands here. Okay, they're not here, way up there. They're way down here. So when you do break fall, you're slapping out, palms down, way down here near your hips. So you're gonna start here. Hands are in, they're crossed. My butt hits the floor first, then my back, then my hands. My head never hits the floor. So I start here, butt, back, hands. Butt, back, hands. Okay, then we're gonna get a little bit taller. We start here, butt, back, hands, and then taller. And when you, but you, you're not crashing, you're still putting your butt on the floor first. So butt, back, hands, okay? Then I want you to go find somebody in your house and have them push you. So you can either have them push you from down here or from standing, but I want you to do five break pulls, butt, back, hands. Okay, then we're gonna practice the really important part Falling down without splitting your head open is very important, especially if you like trip on the ice. But if somebody knocks you down, maybe even more important is being able to get back up so you can defend yourself. So if you fall down, you do your break fall, somebody knocks you down, you do your break fall. Oh. You lay on the floor here, you're going to get hit. You have to be able to get up. Now if I get up like this, if I put my hands here, my hands are down, I can't protect my head, I step towards the person, I'm offering them my face. Okay, so we're gonna do instead, you're gonna do your back break fall. Now we're gonna sit up. I put my right hand, it doesn't matter which one you do, we'll do it on both sides. But if I put my right hand behind me, I'm gonna plant my left foot on the floor, take my right foot step back, so now I'm up in a guard stance, and I've stepped away from my attacker. You can do it just as easily on the other side. I put my left hand on the floor, my right foot, Plants, left one steps back. For me, that side is much less coordinated. Okay, but I'll show you from the other direction so you can do it with me. I'm gonna do my break fall. I'm gonna put one hand on the floor, plant the opposite foot on the floor. Okay, so I got my right hand down and my left foot. So now since my right hand's down, my, left, my right foot is gonna step back away from my attacker and my hands are up guard stance. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to have that same person who knocked you down. They're gonna knock you down and then they're gonna take one step away and then they're gonna try to tag you in the head before you get up. So they're gonna give you a second to get up. If you get attacked, you might not have that second, but at least while we're learning this, especially if you're doing it on a hard floor, they're gonna give you a second. So they're gonna knock you down, you're gonna break full and get right back up and come to your guard stand to protect your head. They're gonna push you down Take one step back and then run in and try to tag you in the head before you can get up. Okay, you guys have three self defenses, one from each curriculum. And you'll see in a minute where the um, break falls tie into this, okay? The first one is hidden sword. Somebody chokes you from behind this way, hands are up. You squish their fingers, take a little step away. I'm not stepping away this way, I'm just taking enough of a step that I can then put the other foot behind, hide the sword, turn. Break their elbow, punch them either in the head or in the ribs. It's going to depend on how tall they are. Okay, so again here, hands up. Break their fingers or smush their fingers. You might not break them. Little step, tuck your foot, hide the sword, turn, break the elbow, punch, kick, cover up. Okay, so save that for a minute. 
The second one that we're going to do is Kataguruma. So someone is throwing a punch at your head. You're going to get out of the way, block. You're, coming, you're stepping inside. So if they're facing me, and they're punching me with their right hand. I'm blocking with my left, stepping in and punching. Switch hands, turn, take them down, punch, cover out. Um, from this direction, they throw the punch at my head, I get out of the way, I punch, switch hands, turn elbow, take them down, punch, cover out. The thing to be conscious of when you do Kataguruma is that once you have your back to them, you're not putting your foot back. You're keeping your feet in the same line. Your feet aren't stepping, you just turn and drop. Okay, that's the second one. The third one is somebody throws a punch at you. You're gonna block that punch. They're gonna throw another punch at you. You're gonna spin, block that punch with a reverse crescent kick. Put your knee down on the floor, iron broom, cover up. Okay, so from the other direction, that goes this way. Block the first punch with your hand. Block the second punch with a spin reverse crescent kick. Knee down, don't hit the wall. Iron broom, cover up. Okay, so now where the break falls come into this. You're gonna find the same person who helped you practice your break falls, who pushed you down when you did your break falls. You're gonna do those three self-defenses with them, one time through, really slow and easy, or as many times as you need to, to make sure that they understand the attack and that you understand the self-defense and you can do it with, with intensity but control. Okay, so the first one, they're gonna grab your two-hand choke like this from the back of your new hidden sword. The second one, they're gonna throw a punch with their right hand, and the third one, they're gonna punch with their right hand and then with their left hand. Okay, so you're gonna practice all three of those. Okay, so you did that, right? Now you're gonna come back. Now, remember the break falls we did? So the first one, they're gonna knock you down. So you're gonna do your break fall and you're gonna get back up. And while you're getting up, they're running behind you. So you have to get up fast enough that when they choke you, you can do your self-defense, okay? Because we talk about intensity as being power, speed, focus, accuracy. But if somebody knocks you down and then you lay on the ground and you think about what your self-defense is going to be, there's no intensity. Okay, so the next one is Kataguruma. They throw a punch, so they're going to knock you down. You get up. They throw a punch. Block, punch, turn. Discuss it with them before you take them down. If you're practicing with your parents, my guess is they probably don't want you to take them down. Punch, cover up. And then the third one is the iron broom. I'm gonna start back here so I'm spinning my knee on the wooden floor and not on the mat. They're gonna knock you down, break fall. Get up, they throw a punch. Block the first punch. Block the second punch sweep them off their feet okay then you're going to do each one of those with your partner one more time and this time they're going to knock you down and then they're going to step back and step in and try to tag your head before they do the attack so we're going to put those two drills together um hidden sword kataguruma iron broom okay we're going to do single stick two different ways Okay, so the single stick is a 16 count. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the attacks. And then the defenses, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so you're gonna do it three times through just uh, increasing intensity. So the first time, you're just putting the stick where it needs to go. The second time, you're hitting harder and faster. Okay, I don't want to, there's a light in here with a chain too. All my rooms have lights with chains. Um, it's an old house. The third time through, you're gonna go like you're trying to take somebody's head off. 
okay? Then you're gonna go up and down. So you're gonna do two moves, no intensity. Two moves, lots of intensity. Two moves, no intensity. Two moves, lots of intensity. Two moves, no intensity. Two lots, two no intensity, and two lots. Okay, and then I want you to get a partner. Practice it with your partner. You practice it with your partner with no intensity at all. Then you practice it with your partner with medium intensity. Then you practice it with your partner as intense as you can go without losing control and crunching somebody's fingers. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with two sticks that we did with one. We're gonna do it once just really no intensity. I'm just going through the motions. I'm putting the stick where it needs to be. Okay, then I'm gonna do it with moderate intensity. Okay, then I am not gonna do it full out intensity because there's a light with the cord and there's my husband's big television, but you're gonna do it probably outside in the yard, full power, full speed, full intensity. Okay, then you're gonna bring it back in and you're gonna go, think about your intensity being levels one to four. So one is barely intense, four is much more intense. So you're gonna do one with no intensity, two with more intensity, three with more intensity, and without hitting anything, or with more intensity, more speed, more power, more focus. I want you to practice it with somebody both ways, all the way through low intensity, all the way through medium, all the way through high, and then too high, too low, too high, too low. Okay, so we're sort of gonna do the same thing with the side that we did with the sticks, except I'm gonna offer you another option. Okay, so we're gonna do it the form the first time all the way through with no intensity. You're just putting your hands where they're supposed to be, handling the weapon properly. Okay, then I'm gonna put mine down because I don't want to use any more intensity in the house and send the side flying through the television. But I can do the side form. I'm not gonna do it like I have Psy in my hands. I'm gonna do it as an open hand form with more intensity. Okay, then I'm going to do it again as an open hand form, not as a side form. If you're doing it with the side, do it with the side. But if you're doing it open hand, make it into an open hand form. Use punches and chops, not a pretend side in your hand. Okay, so with more intensity, they're not worrying about going through the television. Okay, so I want you to do it like that. Three times through, low intensity, middle intensity, high intensity. If high intensity inside makes you nervous about throwing a metal weapon across the room, do it as an open hand form. 